So Ethan, uh, you, uh, we are at uh, Next Rep uh, in, in Europe in Amsterdam. Yes. Uh, you're, go you're going to give a talk uh, today. Uh, first, tell me something about your background because I read your sure. resume also on Wikipedia and it's, it's really long. So I think you know <laughs> what to highlight. So I work on technology and social change. Uh, so sometimes that means that I run NGOs or I advise them. I teach at uh, MIT's Media Lab in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, and I write books, but I'm really interested in the ways that technology is changing our society. And how is it changing society? Well, for the good where and for to, the bad. Where to start? So, uh, it's, it's hard to know where to start on that. A lot of my work is on the question of whether technology is bringing us closer together, whether it's helping people build new relationships and new friendships. I'm going to talk today about the weird phenomenon that we can report news from anywhere in the world, but that we may not actually be meeting people from these countries. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how strange it is that given the refugee crisis in Europe, very few of us actually are talking to the people directly affected, the refugees themselves. Yeah, so maybe something also a, a, a strange thing in human beings that we're talking about each other, but not to each other. That's right, and that we have a really strong tendency to talk to people who are like us, yeah. uh, whether they're the same race or the same gender or the same ethnicity, that um, that idea that we tend to talk to people who look and feel similar is a very profound uh, tendency. And I'm doing quite some research in the collaborative economy. Yes. Uh, that's also the peer-to-peer -peer economy. I think the word peer-to-peer -peer is also really typical for that we're looking for like-minded people. I think peer-to-peer -peer is really aspirational. So I think, unfortunately, when you get into an Uber, you're usually not interacting with a peer. You're usually interacting with someone who is probably working a lot harder than you are and probably making a lot less than you are, and unfortunately has a real tenuousness uh, to his or her existence. I think a real peer-to-peer -peer economy would be a very, very good thing. I fear that in a lot of cases, at least in the US, what the peer economy really is, is an excuse for deregulating and not protecting um, some of the most economically vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, I think ma many people see it as new, but in the end, the basics there are not, not new, but it's just the way it's now scalable uh, is new. And I think the problem of, the, of, of making it scalable will go to few people and will make it get bigger. Well, certainly one of the things that's happening in this cycle of the venture economy is that the wealth is incredibly highly concentrated with the venture capitalists and less so with the people who are building and running the companies. Um, you know, when Uber finally goes public, um, you're not going to have any of those drivers turn into multimillionaires. Mm -hmm. um, so what worries me is, for many Americans at least, particularly people of color, particularly poor women, um, economics has always been tenuous. It's always been, I wonder if my job will be there tomorrow. I think people are only starting to talk about it now because now it's affecting white men as well. But I think it's now become the new normal, the idea that you don't have a job, you have gigs. Yeah. And I think it's very different if you think about it as the gig economy, or we tend to call it the 1099 economy in the US, referring to the tax code that lets these companies pretend that you're a contractor rather than an employee for them. Yeah, but in the end, I think the uh, discussion is not only about the platform, because like in the Netherlands, discussions about Uber drivers uh, should it be uh, uh, with the company or not. It's also the same discussion we have in many other different branches. I think it's a, 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 a movement to a much more flexible labor market, and also yep. that's the, uh, the, the companies don't want to take too much responsibility. That's right. That's also, right. for some yeah, good reason, because like in the Netherlands, it's really hard yeah. uh, to, uh, like when you have people um, uh, in your company and, and when they uh, get sick, you have to pay them for about two years. So, That's it, right. so the risk That's is right. really high. So I think we also need to go to another, another structure. But I think the question is, what is it that we want work to be? Um, so at some point in the past, the Netherlands decided that if someone gets seriously ill, they wanted to make sure that people were taken care of and taken care of for a long time. Um, we want to reconsider that, maybe, but rather than just sort of ignoring these mm -hmm. laws, we actually should have a conversation about what do we want the future of work yeah. to be. Yeah. For me, this whole notion of disruption basically translates to, 
I'm going to ignore the law and try to do things the way that I want to do it. I would rather use this as an opportunity to have that conversation. What do we think work should be like in the Netherlands? What do we think work should be like in the US at this point? I think we could have a really good conversation about it, but I don't want those decisions just being made by venture capitalists. I want them being made by, by everybody, including my Uber driver. Yeah, I think it's a really, a, a really good idea. And like when you talk uh, 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 before uh, the cameras on, uh, I said, okay, uh, dilemmas, and you, you said, okay, I love dilemmas, so let's, so let's talk about them. Uh, in the platform economy, uh, people are really about, okay, trust is a really important issue. Yeah. Uh, I think rating is really overrated because people say, yeah. okay, trust is really important, but in the end, uh, the trust system, they're really based on really practical uh, uh, numbers, but in the right. end, we, we people make decisions by, by this. That's right. So, so, so I yeah. think that's, that's something that's really missing in the, in the discussion. Um, what do you think, what is also the, the dilemma in these uh, trust issues? I think trust is so complicated that it's very hard to capture in a number from one to five. I'm very lucky in that I live in a tiny town of about 4,000 people and I know my community very, very well. And there are people where you could say, do you trust this person? And I can't give you an answer in terms of a number. I can say, I know that person really well. I trust them with these things, but not with these things. There are people who I would trust to take care of my child, but I would never trust to manage my money. And there are people that I would trust to manage my money and never to take care of my child. Does that mean that I trust them? One to five, how does that work? So I think this is just one of these things where we're on the right track that trust is a smart thing to think about. It's super important. We need to spend more time understanding it. But I think we also have to understand that it's not a simple number. It's a very complicated equation. A lot of my work right now is on the idea that people don't trust big companies, big business, big government. If it's big enough that you don't have a face on it, people have a very hard time trusting it. And I think that's good for the peer economy because it feels like you're trusting your driver or your Airbnb host. But you also have to remember that that's just the face of this much, much bigger thing, and maybe yeah. that thing is not worth trusting. Yeah, yes, and I think also really the, 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 the trust system has to change because uh, two days ago I received a new recommendation uh, from Airbnb for, for my host in Paris. Ah. And I read it and I thought, okay, good recommendation. This is bullshit. This is just, just, yeah. just, just middle of the road. Oh, awesome guy. So everybody's awesome in the gig economy. Uh, so it's, it's, it's this really isn't new, right? I've no. been on eBay since you know 1998, and I have a whole string of A plus 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 bestseller <laughs> would work with again. You know that's also, great, guy. You're really I'm, good. I'm nice glad. No, 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 absolutely. I'm the bestseller, <laughs> and and you know, so it's a whole economy where you know how do I know how to trust that that Airbnb guest? I trust my close friends. I trust their recommendations much more than I trust someone anonymous and random. Yeah. And that person who's anonymous and random, they have every incentive to overinflate that rating. Yeah. Um, whereas my friends are the ones that I would actually want to pay attention to. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's very complicated. We haven't solved the problem yet. And, 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 and what do you think are, are more interesting dilemmas in the, uh, in the collaborative economy? I think the real dilemma in the collaborative economy is what do we want work to look like? Um, because I think we all want work to be more flexible, I think we're all letting go of the idea that we're going to work one job for the rest of our lives. I think we want companies to be agile and to be nimble, but I also think we all want a, a safety net. And so you were giving the example before of, you know, in the Netherlands, someone gets sick when they're working and suddenly the employer is obligated to pay them for two years. Yeah, that, that sounds difficult. On the flip side, I want to make sure that we have some sort of way of protecting people who get seriously ill. So we need to have this much longer conversation. What do we want work to look like? What do we want as protections for workers at the same time as we have an economy that's nimble and flexible? And that's a really tricky dilemma. Yeah, I think you also have to, have to change from looking to workers as a just replaceable asset yes. to human being uh, with talents uh, and just, yeah, being human yeah. being. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think we need to do that and we also need to do it in a way that we also recognize that Everyone is human and everyone is fragile and that um, you may not be in the same place in two years that you are right now and you may need more help than you need right now. Okay, so. and last two questions, yeah. what, what worries you most? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think what worries me most is that despite all this technology, we still aren't paying very much attention 
to the rest of the world and to the people who need the most help and that who really need the innovation from technology. It makes me so sad that all these smart people in San Francisco and New York are creating new apps and new toys for other people in San Francisco and New York and that so few people are thinking about what does it mean to have technology for Africa or India or Bangladesh. I would love to see those two worlds come closer together. And then what makes you, uh, so what gives you hope? So also what keeps you driving the work you're doing? So that one's easy. It's hanging out in sub-Saharan Africa, India, Bangladesh, places like that and seeing how many smart, incredible, creative people are creating the future. And uh, I'm just waiting for the moment where we realize that the future is coming out of those places as equally as it's coming out of San Francisco, New York, Amsterdam, London. Yeah, okay, so, so let's give less attention to the big app builders in, in the big cities, but more look to, uh, to the smaller uh, companies, organizations. Let, let's, let's look to the people who are really creating the future. And for the most part, they're not in the north, they're in the south. And for the most part, they're not, you know, white men like you and me. They're, they're mostly black and brown people who are doing amazing things with technology and inventing the future. Yeah, cool. So let's do that. Let's so do thanks, that. Uh, for the nice talk. talking with you, yeah, Martin. Absolutely. With Thank you so much. Yeah.